Products in this video were provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone. Hello my friends, this is your friend Nikki back again. Today I'm bringing you a review overview of the Fractal Design Define S2 Vision RGB. She's a beautiful case with a ton of options. So let me bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see everything firsthand. All right, so first off, you may be able to tell the glass is a little tinted. It does come with tinted glass on this side and on the other side. And if you wanted to, up on the top and in the front, she does have glass. And I'll show you that all in one second. Let me show you on the top what it looks like with liquid cooling right now. On the top, on the front, and on the bottom, you can put radiators. You can put up on the top, right up here, a 120, 140, 240, 280, up to a 360 millimeter radiator. In the front, you can fit a 120, 140, 240, 280, and 360 millimeter. At the very back, you can fit 120 millimeter. At the very bottom, you can fit a 120, 140, 240 millimeter liquid cooling unit. Okay, so that goes without saying. Up on the top, you can also fit three fans, either 120 or 140. In the front, you can fit three fans as well, 120 or 140. In the back, a 120 or a 140. And at the bottom, you could fit two 120s or two 140s. Now, the system does already come with three 140 millimeter Prisma AL14 PWM addressable RGB fans up in the front and one in the rear. So at the very top, again, we have liquid cooling, so they give us this vent, but we have options. So we can take this off and out of the box, sorry for the fingerprints, but out of the box, it comes with this glass top. Okay, you can keep this glass top on. Obviously, you don't want to keep it on there with liquid cooling, so I'm going to go ahead and take that off real quick. Now, one bad thing is when you replace this panel that comes with it originally, it's a different panel, you have to remove the magnetic, and it's also glued on there, the RGB strip. You can see a little bit of it back here. You can remove it and then put it, apply it back on the case again since it is magnetic and does have a little bit of reusable glue on it already. As you can see right over here, if you do have a custom loop, you can fit, this is your fill hole. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the front of the system real quick. Now at the front here, you can see there are also addressable RGB fans. Again, the Prisma AL 14 PWM fans. I do have it set to rainbow, but you don't need it that color. You can also, it also has one in the back you can see there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the machine. That way I can show you a little bit closer up how everything looks. So one sec. This side panel and this side panel are removable. You can screw them in, but you don't need to. So you can easily pull on it, pull it out. They have little handles here that you could pull on. Now, it snaps into the case with this peg you can see right here into this hole right up here. It also has that same hole down here at the very bottom. You can see there is one SSD here. There is also a tray for another SSD here. I took it out because I wanted to show you something and I'll show you that in one second. Okay, so back here, you can see these guys here. That means you can fit three 3.5 inch drives. They can also be 2.5 inch drives. So you can have a total of five SSDs or two SSDs, three 3.5s or kind of any way how you want to put that. Now kind of building upon what they've had before. Before, for example, on the R6, you had three PWM fans, while the other five, I would say, they were, you know, 
all the power. Now on here, all nine of these, this is the ne Nexus 9P PWM fan hub. All of these are PWM controlled. And then since these are RGB fans, does have the RGB header right here or the, the pinout. Now one thing I don't like about the way they have this implemented is there is nothing holding this down. Let me zoom in so you can see it. You can see right here, there is nothing kind of clamping this together so it doesn't fall apart. So a few times during my build, you know, tugging cables and everything, these have come apart and then, you know, two or three or four of the fans just didn't turn on. And it took me a while to figure out, you know, what was the weakest link. So there is about four or five of these guys. So you definitely have to pay attention there. You have plenty of space back here for all these cables. I believe it was 38 millimeters, but if not, I'll go ahead and put it down there. You can see there are one, two rubber grommets here. There are two rubber grommets on the inside as well. Now, let me go ahead and turn this around. Take this side panel off. Again, comes off really easy. Since I build so many of these guys, I hate putting screws on there. And these, they don't, again, they don't need screws, so they clamp on very nicely. So then you saw those two rubber grommets along the top. Actually, let me turn it back around. So two rubber grommets up here, two rubber grommets down here. Then there is one rubber grommet right over here and then one right over here. Now they include this panel here and then this back panel so that if you wanted to, you could put reservoirs, either one down here or one up here and they include brackets as well. So that's pretty nice. I decided to keep this on that way. It's a little bit easier to hide some cables. Now, in order to take off this panel, it's kind of a pain. You have to take off the front panel. There's two screws right over here and then there is another screw right around here somewhere. So it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Three screws to take off this guy. Now it comes off pretty easy. These two holes here, you can just use your fingers, pulls out this way, then you can rock it out. This is the Fractal Design Celsius S36. This does not come with a unit. This is separate. It fits in fine. The bad thing about it is these are not RGB lit. So, but the cool thing is since these emit so much light, it kind of reflects off of this white, makes it look nice. So now this is the EVGA Z390 dark motherboard. It is an EATX motherboard and the case does support mini ATX, micro ATX, ATX, and as you see here, EATX. Now, let me zoom in on something real quick for you. Okay, now you can see there's a rubber grommet right over here and the other rubber grommet right down here. You can barely tell. Let me zoom out, see if you can see it better. The problem with the EATX board in this case, and honestly in most cases, is they build the cases for ATX motherboards. Kind of EATX seems like an afterthought. So you can't really fit in cables in there. Uh, the way I did it in my build was for the SATA cables. Since they're so thin, I pushed the motherboard up a little bit, slid them through, and then put it down and screwed it in. I made sure that there was no solder point or anything that was too sharp that would puncture the cable. It did fit, it just, you know, I kind of had to finagle it in there. Now, another cool thing that I showed you in another one of the videos, and I can actually show you here, is right down here, that's a little control. That way you can change the RGB, you can change all that stuff. Now, I mentioned that I'm using the EVGA Z390 dark motherboard. That does not have any RGB headers. So this little guy, this little control here allows you to change that. So give me one second so that I can put everything together and show you how it looks. I shut off one of my lights. That way you can see the lights a little bit better inside of the case. So instead of having to control it on software, like you have to control the Patriot Viper 3200 megahertz RAM and the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 XE Ultra is right down here. So right now it's in rainbow. That was fast. That was slow rainbow. This is fast rainbow. Or should I say this is fast rainbow. They have a few different modes and I'll go ahead and put it in a uh, graphic right over here. Let 
so you can see it in the front a little bit better. I'm kind of blocking the third fan right down here. And that one's off. Okay, so now it doesn't only have RGB, although that's all I've shown you. I can make it colors. Okay, and then aside from colors, I can change the intensity too. So you see there's five different presets. Highest, right below the highest, right below that, right below that, the lowest. Okay, so five different presets and of course, there is off. So you have a ton of options and you know, through all of them, there's a bunch of different options you can select there. So it's not just Rainbow that has all those features, although that's the one, you know, catches your eye a little bit more. Now, the maximum CPU cooler, this supports, the height is 185 millimeters. The GPU can support up to 440 millimeters, and you can see right up here with the EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 XC Ultra, there is so much more space in here. You can almost fit another one of these guys if you wanted to. The maximum power supply length is 300 millimeters. All right. And then right up here, you can see these vents. They are almost an inch wide. So, and they're on both sides. So they, they are able to suck in a ton of air. Now along the bottom, let me show you that real quick. There is this filter here. To make sure your power supply doesn't get all dusty, you could just take it out, rinse it in a sink, and just pop it right back in. Coming back inside, this guy takes up three slots up front. There are seven total slots up here, and then two additional vertical mounted, so you can vertical mount your GPU if you want to. I'll go ahead and link in the description below the cable that Fractal Design sells. You can see the power supply is vented. So that way, of course, you can get some more additional air in there. Or if there's any heat, it'll rise from there. Now, what I was showing you earlier about this SSD tray is if you wanted to keep both in the back, you could. Or if you want to take out one or both and put them up here, you can as well. There's a little notch right here. You can just slide in there. You might have to play with it a little bit. All right. And then with that thumb screw, you can just screw that in there. You can put it here. You could put it here. You can even put one right up here. And then actually one other thing I did forget to show you guys. Let me bring you up here real quick. So then right up here, we have the 3.5 inch headphone jack. Right next to it, the 3.5 inch microphone jack, the reset button, the USB-C connection, the power button, two USB 2.0 ports, and then two USB 3.0 ports. So again, a ton of options in this case. All right, guys, so pros and cons. The case is relatively affordable. The, uh, the fact that it has tempered glass on both sides and even on the top if you wanted to. The front panel does not feel like glass. It feels like maybe plastic or something like that. It does include four RGB fans, which honestly, I was not too much of a fan of. I didn't find any kind of thrill to having RGB, but you know, now that I have it here, I really like the way it looks. So, now, it is very quiet. It's a little bit louder in this video because of the liquid cooling unit. It is cooling an Intel Core i9-9900K. Those things get hot. 
All right, you have a ton of fan options and radiator support as well as reservoir support. So a ton of options for cooling. The fact that all five potential drives, if you have five drives, are not only hidden, but the fact that you have, you can do either five drives, SSDs, or two SSDs and three 3.5s, it is awesome. And as you can see, there is a ton of space for cable management, not only here, but a lot that you can hide in the back. The Nexus 9P Fan Hub Controller is pretty awesome as well. That way you don't need a bunch of fan header, uh, cables all uh, littered across your case. They can all come to the back here. Now, those 3.5 inch drives potentially that you can have back there, the accessory box does bring noise dampeners. That way, if they are back there, you'll keep them nice and quiet. The built-in support for a vertical GPU mount is pretty nice. I haven't tried one myself, so I can't say how good it'll be. Now, some cons. The power supply truck, while it is vented, and that's awesome, but the fact that it is riveted on there, you can't remove it if you wanted to. I don't know why you would, but if you want to, you have to remove those rivets and then maybe get some more rivets in there again to put everything back in together. As I mentioned before, also the, the rubber grommets for the EATX boards in case you have it. It would be nicer if you can, you know, if they were maybe spaced a little bit more outwards. That way you can hide your cables. I think I did a good job managing the cables, but I felt like I could have done much better if I could have hid them. And then one of the biggest ones... Uh, because I've looked at the way others do it is again the way that those RGB headers connected You know, they would fall off relatively easily So, you know, you I've been able to do it with two zip ties on each end and then one zip tie right in the middle And then with the top with the part that you zip tie at the very top That way it's not going to slide down to keep that cable together. I didn't do it there, but I did it in another example inside the case. But I feel like they should really redesign that. And I know it might make it a little bit more difficult in order to route some cables, but again, just a thought, just an idea. Now, the reason I mentioned these thoughts and these ideas is not only for you guys, you know, you guys are gonna listen to that and everything, but if you've noticed every single case and every single revision of the Define, of the S2 and everything else that they make, they don't just make because, hey, you know what? I got an idea. They not only have their own ideas, but they listen to the community. I've, I've noticed that a lot of things that we've griped about and complained about, these, actually, these guys actually put in their cases. I think that's pretty cool. It speaks loads because we're the consumers. We're the one buying their cases. If they don't have what we want, we're just gonna buy something else. And in this case, it looks like they're hitting just about every target. But honestly, if they hit every single target today, tomorrow we're gonna complain about something else. That's the way we are, we're gonna do that. But still, anyway, again, this is Iggy doing a review overview of the Fractal Design Define S2 Vision RGB case. Thumbs up for me, I think Fractal Design did an amazing job on this case. And uh, here's to the S3, what amazing things they're gonna put into that one. So, Iggy out. See you guys. Products in this video were provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone.